Hi, this is Geek Entertainment Television and Irina Slutsky with Philip Rosedale. Or I should say, Philip Linden. Sometimes both. The man who created Second Life. A lot of people like you a lot, don't they? Uh, it's neat to see this all <laughs> taken off. It's all, it's all finally uh, starting to work. How many people are inside now, Second Life? Well, there's more than just a little more than 500,000 people who have signed up. Um, there are about 40 or 50,000 people a day who are using it now. And a lot of people are actually using it to make uh, money in real in their real life. Yeah, I mean, the whole thing about Second Life and what's so fun about it and what's so different about it is that it is user created. It's whatever you want to make, and we we don't make anything, and we build an economy, you know, we built this in-world economy that allows you to actually make money if you want to sell things. And so people make clothes and fashion and what else do they do besides that? A lot more. So, uh, you know... Uh, they sell genitalia? <laughs> people sell just about anything in Second Life that you could imagine buying in the real world, as long as you don't have to smell it or taste it, you know. the, the uh, You know, cars, uh, furniture, architecture, services, you know, people come and like design your house for you, um, shop with you. Um, you know, there are new things that are coming now that we're getting so big, like education and training, and you can, you can learn another language. You can sit in a cafe and have people speak to you in another language in Second Life. How cool is that? Well, the best part is, is that you can say Booyakasha to all the people who thought you could never do this, right? I know, I know. You know, in, in, when we started, I'm so fortunate that, you know, I was a, a person who had enough money to sort of finance the company myself. For the so he's rich and good looking. <laughs> and married, so forget about it. The uh, yeah, the first the you know the first couple of years were were tough. Nobody. But really, thought nobody thought you could do it, right? No, everybody thought that it was either technically impossible or just a stupid idea, even if it was technically possible. So all those analysts were like, "He's crazy. He's never gonna do it." So analysts, you know, you can go suck an egg. We used to joke that um, you know we were we were the best meeting a potential investor could have, not because they'd ever invest, but just because we were so amusing. Yeah. You know, and we we realized at some point that they all loved to take the meetings, but that none of them were ever going to consider investing in this. Ha ha! Suck an egg. <laughs> all right. So, how many people here are at the uh, conference today? Uh, I think the they say they say that there are uh, oh, more than four hundred. More than 400. And right now, how much money is going in and out of the economy? You said about $8 million. Yeah, it's somewhere in the range of about 7, seven to $8 million U.S. a month in things people are buying and selling from each other. So that's pretty big. So if your first life sucks, come on in to Second Life. That's right. Cool. Eric Rice, a.k.a. Spin Martin, Second Life Conference. What do you got to say for yourself? It's cold, but it's warm inside because there are so many freaking people. It's great. You mean there's so many freaks? Ah, oh, no. This is actually a really diverse group of people from all over the place. He's being nice. Uh, no. It, you know what's funny is that this is so different than, like, blogger conferences because you have a much closer kinship with other people in your community. I mean, there is community with blogging and podcasting and video blogging, but when you see it at, at the Second Life level, you know, there's an existence of people in a virtual place and you see them, it's, it's exciting. People have been partying long and hard. And so how many fans does Spin Martin have? I don't know. Spin Martin does a lot of stuff with uh, media and audio and video. Thousands of oh, girly stop. fans. Stop, stop. You, what I really want to know is, can you fly inside of Second Light? I can't fly in here. This is a no-fly zone, so we have to walk and deal with the analog lag of a lot of people. Uh, you can fly, uh, your avatar flies, or you can get uh, airplanes and such. Uh, driving's not exactly the best experience. Uh, boating's kind of fun. So. What uh, what what kind of fashions do you wear inside of Second Life? I've I've seen you wear a lot of tight pants. Spin. I think that's just a characteristic of the system. Now I generally I, I'm pretty similar to real life. You know, t-shirts, jeans. You know, my here, here's a picture of my avatar. You know, it's boring wearing a black shirt. And uh, usually, since men's shoes are kind of hard to find, I end up wearing combat boots, spiky type things, and you know, so I kind of keep it boring. So why why is Second Life so so popular? Well, I think Second Life represents two things. I mean, it's very similar. The stuff that goes on there is exactly the same as what goes on with blogging. And uh, I I don't think so. I've never bought a genitalia. Well, that's true. However. When you're talking about things like building trust relationships and socializing with people and collaborating and DIY, I mean, everything that, the, what we're representing, the semantics of it being a 3D world, th the 3D part is the most complex yet what makes it work. It's like every killer app on the net put into one place, the 3D thing. And also I think Second Life really represents, while it's not a game, it 
might change the way gaming works in like five years. Can you imagine there's a world you can build? You don't like Warcraft? Go ahead and build one yourself. And who knows, maybe in five years we could be doing that on the Xbox Live platform. And you know, by the end of 2008, it's projected that video gaming will bypass film and music industries combined in revenues. Wow, I'd never in a million years think I could do anything with gaming. I never thought I could combine blogging, podcasting, and video blogging, and photography, and working with so many creative people, and having a new social network that's based on a lot of different factors in one place, and well, here we are. Mm, you're making my head spin, Martin. That's, yeah, I've heard that before. Spin me right around, baby. My name is, <laughs> I have to look, Vanda McLean. I've been here two years, and I have a, a large park, which is called Vanda's Pocket Park, although it's gotten beyond the pocket. It's a very big pocket by now. Landscaping has been what I'm really into. The, all the different things that are, that are in Second Life that I knew nothing about. I just talked to somebody who uh, is into sailing, and he, has, he said there are 80 people who are doing sailing, and there are several different, sim, different sims that are just about sailing. Hmm. Who would have guessed it, you know? Uh -huh. This is actually a, um, a stencil, a picture of a stencil uh, that I, I uploaded and, and as a texture to okay. use on that. Okay, that's one. This is, a, this is a platform that's on the highest part of the land. I thought of it as a gathering place, uh -huh. and it's um, it's one prim across, so it's pretty big. And um, this is a design of a shield, an antique shield that I found in a, a issue of uh, of um, Archaeology Today, and I kind of cleaned it up, you know, wow. because they're all cracked and stuff and faded. Uh -huh. And then I uploaded it as a texture. 